I would like to know a way to mend the damage this has caused to our relationship. Study. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, study. <laughs> <laughs> Always be reading. <laughs> Go back to school. Work on those IQ points, buddy. <laughs> Just keep taking it. Maybe less time caning girls and more time reading books. <laughs>
uh, which means my savings. <laughs> and right. uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Are you on the road a lot? I was this summer, um, but I don't have a ton coming up in the fall, um, which is, you know, I mean, I still, I'm still raising a kid so that it, it's hard to be gone a lot. It, but, uh, it, you know, whatever. It's worrisome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, hey, welcome to Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers. I'm Kane Holloway. I'm Greg Barron. And uh, we have on our guest, Lori Kilmartin. Hi, guys. Uh, very excited to have on Lori. I've done some shows with Lori in New York uh, myself uh, a few times over at the stand. And, oh, yeah. Um, and it's cool. I didn't know you were in I didn't know you were in Los Angeles now. Uh, yeah, well, I go back and forth. But yeah, mostly my kids in school here. So I sort of I'm tethered to his schedule for three more years ah i got and then you. i'm free <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna cut him loose man that's it for real <laughs> uh do you don't do you practice not taking bullshit for fuckers Lori? uh i i believe i um i believe i i think i do but actually uh, i do take a lot of bullshit from fuckers and non fuckers as well. And uh, that's something I'd like to work on about myself, you know? Yeah. So I'm eager to to uh, pick up tips from you guys. Oh, pick up tips from how not to take bullshit from fuckers. Uh, yeah. Greg, do you have our 10 tips that we usually start the show with? You know what's so funny about the 10 tips? <laughs> yeah. We don't have them. You know what? <laughs> 99 cents for 10 don't take bullshit from fuckers tips. <laughs> Lori, I paid 99 cents for 100 <laughs> tips on how to write comedy. <laughs> I was offering 100 tips for 99 cents, and I was like, I have 99 cents, and I'm, I'm not at a point in my comedy career where I can't use help. In fact, <laughs> I, probably need it, I probably need it more now than ever. Yeah. So... I got the 99 tips and one of them is write 10 jokes every day. And I was like, if I, if I could write 10 jokes every fucking day, do you think I'd need 99 tips? You only, you only need that one actually. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. But what a steal though. That's a penny a tip. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of tips, but it's a lot of stuff that, you know, it's a lot of stuff that you already know. Well, is it stuff you hadn't already memorized and applied from your Gene Parrot books? Or uh, do you remember that guy? P-E-R-R-E-T. No. He had a bunch no. of comedy books like when we started and uh, like one or two. But still, that's a lot back then. And uh, he was like a writer maybe for one of the earlier Tonight Shows. Like maybe not even Carson, maybe before that. And um, he just had like... Like Neil Lieberman had all of his books, you know, these comedy write how to write a joke, and they're books you never look at. Like maybe you look at once and never again, but they're you're like, yeah. how can how can how can a book be this thick and hardback about writing a sixteen word joke? I don't I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. I only ever took I, I took I didn't read any books, but I took Ron Lynch's writing workshop. Oh, now you're talking. Uh, and uh, and it was everybody, Tunkameen and Andrea Levine and all those people who were in the class. And we just sat around Ron's house <laughs> talking about jokes. Like nothing was really ex explained. Yeah. Ron Lynch doesn't write a conventional joke as is. No, he you know, doesn't. Ron's a whole other thing. But is, is he like, like Jackson Pollock, I, I learned, was a classically trained painter and then just threw it all out the window and started doing his own thing. So would Ron Lynch have been like classic, classically trained as a comedian and then just said, fuck it, uh, I'm going to go a different way. But because Probably. of that training, he knew how to throw it all away. He seemed to have a lot of roots in classic show business. Yeah. He knew all those tropes. And he was just fun to write with. I think that's really all you need to do is be in a room full of people that are fun to write with. That's all. Yeah. And you've done that for your whole life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Lori, are you on the dating apps? Are you dating? I'm not. Um, no, I'm not. 
I just, um, it's a lot of drama and, uh, you cause uh, a lot of I drama. <laughs> I, I, I do. I, I don't feel like I'm a dramatic person, but, yeah. um, my, I guess my insistence on doing comedy, it causes mm -hmm. drama for men who would rather I not be out at night. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, no. But, you know, I, I will be. Also, I just didn't want to be distracted from my kid, you know. But he's coming on 16, so, he, you know, he'll soon be distracted from me. And then I, then, you know, just, we start to uh, peel away from each other. But right now we're still pretty tight. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, right. No dating. No, I'm not on any apps now and no dating at the moment. No. Mm -hmm. um, have you have you been on them before? Yeah, a match like old school, like not even an app, like a website. Yeah. Oh, match. Yeah, match. Early days. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And then it was on uh, OK Cupid, maybe. And I went on one date with a guy where we each bought our own coffee, and we talked, and that was it. And then after I did a set on Conan, he started commenting on my set, going, "Yikes! I went out on a date with her." It's like what? <laughs> <laughs> like it's in the YouTube comments. Oh my god! I'm like, it cost you nothing, and <laughs> nothing happened. What? What? What are you mad about? Yikes! I went on a date with her. Yeah. Yikes! I was in the same room as her. <laughs> Essentially, <laughs> what the fuck? Um, well, Pat, you were sent something about getting new dating apps in Los Angeles. Yeah, in Los uh, Angeles specifically. Yeah, Los Angeles specifically. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems like everybody out there is on the dating apps. And uh, somebody came up with some humorous takes on ones. You guys can uh, let me know what you think of these. We've got Whozam. See a face in public you vaguely recognize? This app tells you if it's someone from your high school or the guy from the Hyundai commercial. It's <laughs> pretty good. It's pretty, do, you, it's pretty cute. do you then send a message to that, that person? <laughs> sure. Do you like automatically download their information and then just start talking to them? <laughs> is, is that like Shazam for people? Exactly. Shazam okay. for people. <laughs> oh, Shazam for people is a good idea. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> That would be great. Just hold the phone in their face for a minute. Yeah. Oh, I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know you. I don't know you. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought you, thought you were somebody. You stop what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. We've also got LA Birdwatch, an app to answer the forever question of why is this helicopter circling my house? Mm. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. We've also got Beardy Call. Pings your location and a tasteful nude to everyone you've slept within a four mile radius. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who, who's that one for? I mean, <laughs> are, are there people with that many, uh, I guess, conquests or, or such a high body count that, that they, they get multiple results any location they are? Does it automatically? ping like send out a tasteful nude like just automatically if you get into a area you might have slept with somebody it that's sends right. out your nude to them yes. even if you wanted to or not that's correct Th this next one this one actually hits me pretty hard unfortunately this one's called flirtle watch out wordle this app challenges you to decode a daily text to to, to, hurt, to determine whether someone's actually flirting or you're just desperate that's pretty smart. You know, I, I just would like to say it's okay to be alone. <laughs> you don't you don't always have to keep being with people. You can just enjoy your own company and let things yeah. happen naturally. Pat, I just noticed your shirt. Oh my gosh. Original. Yeah, I love it. We're in the old Jackie and Lori shirt. You bet. And then uh lastly, we've got Graham Graham a new social media network for people over 30 who are too tired to make reels. <laughs> um, so over 30, you're, you're considered, is that, is that a grand grant? Is that a, a reference to Instagram and not grandma? Like you're, you're old at 31. 
maybe a little of both. Oh my God. <laughs> well, shit. are you, uh, Lori, are you active on social media? <laughs> yeah, I'm on Twitter a lot and um, I'm getting more into the habit of uploading video on TikTok and Instagram. It's not my instinct and I don't really enjoy it. Um, uh, I, right now, I feel like everything I'm putting up uh, is I'm putting like like older TV spots and little jokes from older clips just to like let everyone know that I have been alive for a while and that I have it's proof of life when I die and people can, you know, <laughs> pick my, their favorite TikTok of mine and post it when I die, because I don't think, I don't see that it's going to accelerate and turn me into a draw. Like it has with some people. Like, I just don't think that'll be what it is for me, but it's, it's not bad to have a presence on it, especially if you have old material that just sitting there and, and no one's seeing it. Um, you know, might as well get a good joke out there if you can. Yeah, mm -hmm. I put up a couple clips, uh, two, and uh, one of them, one of them got one comment, and the comment <laughs> was "boomer comedy," <laughs> <laughs> and it made me really, <laughs> it made me really hesitate to put more jokes up. <laughs> That's a compliment from a boomer, you know. <laughs> a Absolutely. boomer was like, "Hell Absolutely. yeah, boomer! Finally, boomer!" <laughs> well, every like my kid thinks everyone over thirty is a boomer, so it's it's they they don't they don't know their generations, you know. Um, Kids are. I didn't feel like writing back Gen X. I know it's, it's it's not really a good saver. No, <laughs> you know? it's not. But um, um, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I post this stuff, and it's soccer mom comedy. And you know, if I just mention that I'm a mom, it's like oh, soccer, or I don't know. I, my kid doesn't even play soccer, but yeah, they always find some way. But you know, it's still it's still you have great material greg so if you're not using it anymore uh just throw it out there people would enjoy it i think you're right i think that's a good idea i should do that more gary yeah. goldman puts up clips all the time and they're from all different eras of his life and they're all funny yeah i mean it just reminds people that you're still out there and you're still performing if they haven't seen you in person you know and uh and, and i mean look at it this way if gary goldman at his level has to do it. I feel like, well, you know, I do too. I, I shouldn't complain because he, this guy's had an HBO special and a movie, you know, and feels like he has to keep doing it to fill room. So, oh, yeah. you know. So are you going to start putting up your clips, Greg? Yeah. Great. <laughs> well, look out, follow uh, Greg on TikTok. <laughs> about to start at, blowing up over there at, at, at boomer boomer at, jokes at boomer, at boomer jokes. jokes yes please <laughs> <laughs> make sure you mention oh my only fans <laughs> are you are you working on your only hands <laughs> only fans uh yeah Is i'm trying up? to figure out how to digitize my hands but yes <laughs> sorry i have the only fans that's just pictures of my hands what <laughs> really are you serious <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I set it up last week, but I have to put my bank account in so I can start rolling in the, the 20 Gs. Sure. So OnlyFans now is holding on to all your hand money, but as soon as you link up your bank account, it goes right in. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's your exciting for you. <laughs> yeah, I noticed a lot of people on TikTok had OnlyFans. Not a lot of people, a lot of women. Most <laughs> <laughs> Not that many men. I haven't seen that many men, although I'm sure there are quite a few men on there. But. There's about to be three more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, is it like the Paul F. Tompkins thing where he said you you need X amount of fans in a city and then he'll go to it? You only need X amount of Barrett Hand fans before you're actually seeing, I mean, I mean, of the whole world. You just need oh, a few, no, no, a no. tiny percentage, and, and to see, uh, you know, a comforting level of income increase. <laughs> I look forward to it, and I think the I think the pride that my children will have. 
when, when, when your kids can say, my dad's on OnlyFans. Yeah. <laughs> Such a big moment for them. There'll be a lot of high fives. <laughs> they'll, they'll be asking you to wash your hands before you pass things. <laughs> how, how, old are, how old are your kids now, Greg? Uh, 20 and 17. Okay. Yeah. Is 20 year old still at home? No, she goes to UC Santa Barbara. Hey, that's cool. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, that's so, nice. So she comes home on the weekends and stuff sometimes, and it's great. Yeah, it's great. Does she know the Sussexes? They're in Santa Barbara, Megan and Harry. Oh, Megan and Harry. Yes. Yeah. 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 She doesn't know me yet, but she will. Yeah. <laughs> the, I think they're out, but they should be. Coming back pretty soon. Yeah. Oprah's up there. Oprah's up there too. Yes. And I think I think the Jada Pinkett Smiths are up there. It's nice. It's nice. Uh, it's nice country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have an in then, Greg. We could go kick it with Oprah and her like vineyards and shit. Yeah. Yeah, I'll call her. <laughs> Give Oprah Winfrey a call. What have you been doing this whole time? We could be on the, this show. Under a flirty text. Yes, grew <laughs> up and a picture of your hands. <laughs> she could have an only hands of the month club where uh, she focuses in on different hand picks of Greg's. Oh yeah, I love it. Here's the thing: how great would it be to if you could send a text to Oprah and you chose to write you up, you <laughs> up to Oprah? <laughs> Wouldn't she want to feel like she's a person worthy of a you up? Yeah. I, yes, mm -hmm. of course. Everybody wants to know that they're being Desire. sexualized. <laughs> from the from the he's just not that into you guy. <laughs> you up next to Oprah Winfrey. That'd <laughs> <laughs> uh, be great if she wrote who dis. <laughs> We'll read a self-help quote, and they're definitely not memes. Memes are something completely different than quotes. Quotes are supposed to help you through all the bullshit in your life. And memes are like uh, that poster of that cat hanging from a tree. And it says, hang in there, baby, or Mondays, am I right? Mondays, am I right? So if you can think of a different title, then we'll probably change it. Uh, what does this mean? This is our inspirational quote segment, Lori, where we Greg didn't know what a quote was. He thought quotes were memes. He I thought was, memes were quote. I thought I thought a quote would count as a meme. And I didn't correct him, and so for, <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> For close to 150 episodes, we have this segment been called What Does This Mean? Uh, we have some inspirational quotes. I have one that's long. Uh, Greg, you have a picture of a guy's abs. Is that right? Yes, it's another picture of Pierre Gasly. Pierre, yes. Pierre Gasly, of course. I don't know him. Pierre Gasly is an F1 racer. I'm upset with F1 racing. Mm -hmm. And most of the guys that do F1 racing are dead handsome. Uh, and they all have big Instagram feeds. And mostly it's them playing soccer on the beach in Monaco. Yeah. It's a good yeah. life. A super yeah, good life. Yeah, it sounds like it. There's a lot of a lot of comics are into F1 racing. I see that on Twitter when, whenever you guys have your races. Do you guys yeah, all talk? Yeah, yeah. Are you in yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, a secret they're, spaces they're, uh, group? What's that? Are you in like a secret, is it spaces on Twitter where you're talking about F1 while the rest of us no, are just talking about I got, about I got off of yeah. Twitter. It gave me a heart attack. Did you really I have a heart attack? No, I didn't have a heart attack. But okay. I, it, it gave me, I just couldn't. It gave me arrhythmia. 
Yeah, sure. I didn't, I didn't like it. Yeah. I admire people that are good at it. I wasn't particularly good at it. Well, I, I just mean, shout I think... at the end of my, I just shout at the end of my sentences and that's how you know the joke is done. <laughs> that doesn't yeah. translate. <laughs> you weren't like doing all caps at the end of your tweets to let people know. No, and it's hard okay. and it's hard to do an act out. <laughs> Uh, well, we have some uh, over at DTBFF podcast on Instagram. Uh, we have some people that sent some in. Judith has one that uh, says beauty in beast mode. Yeah, that's all it says. That's all it says. I, I've only heard beast mode. I haven't heard beauty. Is is beauty mode separate or is it is it that's one sentence together? It's one sentence together. Beauty in beast mode. So it's a beauty who's in beast mode. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what is that supposed to tell somebody? <laughs> yeah. Well. I, I, I would think an attractive female athlete or a female athlete that's ready to cause some kind of destruction, like somebody right before a game, and a WNBA game or something like that, right? Sure. Or, or Peter Gasly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Pierre. <laughs> His name's not even Peter, it's Pierre. It's Pierre. It's Pierre. It's Pierre oh, I've been, I've been hearing Peter this whole time. No, it's Pierre. Um uh, she, she also says uh this is this is equally as bad or worse than the wake up beauty, it's time to beast me. <laughs> I've never heard that one. Wake up beauty, because it's time to beast. Damon Eckhoff says uh, sent a video and it's a girl saying, Ask, asking me to hang out at 2 a.m. is pathetic. Where's your dignity? Where's your self-respect? Where's your house? What is your address? <laughs> uh, Interesting. Great turn, great turn at the end there. Yeah, it, it was in all caps too. <laughs> Let's see. Over in our Discord, we have a Discord. Join the Discord. There's people joining it all the time. Um, in the what does this mean section, we have one that says from Denonymous, every dead body on Mount Everest was once a highly motivated person. So maybe calm down. <laughs> <laughs> that I like a lot. That's, good That's really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Finally, finally, one that's clever. <laughs> finally, one that we like. Yeah. I feel like they I learned from that one. People and they <laughs> die. Yeah. <laughs> the Alan Brand sent one that said Spielberg you was could only. Be, though, you could be a guy that's going up after school. I don't know about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> the one guy that lived who just kept questioning the whole time. <laughs> really not sure about this guy. <laughs> I like climbing and everything, but this seems dumb. I don't think this Sherpa likes me. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm not having a good ride. Uh, the Alan Brand sent one that said Spielberg was only 26 when he made Jaws. Michael Jackson was only 24 when he recorded Thriller. Uh, say Hinton, S.E. Hinton. Who's that? Mm -hmm. yeah. The Outsiders. Yeah. Oh. Essie Hinton was only 19 when The Outsiders was published. It's too late. You need to give up. <laughs> oh, I think I saw that on Twitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Monica sent one that says, if at first you don't succeed, then skydiving definitely isn't for you, which is a Stephen Wright joke. <laughs> is that a Stephen Wright joke? It's a good joke. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good joke. It, it is, is a good, good joke, it's but it's one joke. of those ones you've heard for so long, you forgot it's a joke now. You're just yeah. like, it's just become part of like pop culture. But yeah, but what the time it was delivered, it was fresh and no one thought that way, you know? That's true. Uh, that's all we have in our Discord from our listeners. Um, I have one that says, I just want you to know that if you're out there and you're being really hard on yourself right now for something that has happened, it's normal. That is what is going to happen 
to you in life. No one gets through unscathed. We are all going to have a few scratches on us. Please be kind to yourselves and stand up for yourself, please. Taylor Swift. That's more of a paragraph. <laughs> it's just right? the longest thing yeah. ever. <laughs> the reason I mean, I What kind of coffee mug can you put that one on? <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> Well, the yeah, reason you put on a bottle of something, no, <laughs> like a wa like a tall water bottle. <laughs> you're just like, and it wraps around the whole thing, so you're yeah. constantly spinning the fucking thing. Uh, the reason I picked it is because I, I I looked, I was like, Google inspirational quotes, and that popped up, and I'm like, this is the longest fucking thing. I want quotes, not a diatribe. <laughs> what the fuck? So, yeah, that's that doesn't sound like a lyric of hers, right? It just sounds like she was spouting off in an interview, and, yeah, and yeah. people took it as gospel because she said it. But yeah, T Swift. It's not on Swift. It's on us. It's on what on what we what we need and look to as a culture. It's true. True. <laughs> um, Lori, do you have one that you you said you had one that you hate? I hate if it doesn't kill you it makes you stronger what doesn't kill you makes you stronger i really hate it mm -hmm. um why because people say it too much? much yeah i think so i think whenever something bad happens and it and it's like uh, you haven't committed suicide yet then they, they offer this little bon mod of you're getting stronger well no <laughs> should i just kill myself and then you'll know i wasn't stronger <laughs> i mean what a horrible thing to say Something horrible happened. It's it's weakening you. It's horrible. You may never recover. Could someone just say that so that at least you know where you're coming from? And then part of it is this whole, uh, you're going to get better and stronger all the time. You're not. You're going to start to deteriorate. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to suck. I had, I had cancer. And then, and then I, I had chemo and it, cured the cancer so i defeated the cancer but the chemo made it so i got another cancer so not only did i not get stronger i got more cancer oh my god, <laughs> oh my, god. my teeth chipped i had to have my hip replaced my thyroid removed so it didn't make me stronger it made me more susceptible to deterioration <laughs> thank what you Lori is saying yeah. I mean, I don't want to be right. I'm just saying <laughs> that quote is incorrect. And it's attributed to Sam Kinison, who, uh, you know, died very young. So I'm, I'm just yeah. saying, like, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to take his advice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what true. killed Sam Kinison actually killed him. <laughs> yeah. it made the other comics at the store who got his slot stronger comics because they got more stage time because he wasn't he wasn't there anymore so yeah. maybe it's whatever doesn't kill a, another you. person so yeah or whatever kills him whatever makes, kills you them makes you stronger yeah got yeah it. opens up a slot <laughs> Yeah. Butterfly have a effect. Position. There's a chair open. Butterfly effect. Yes. There's a parking spot. <laughs> uh, Pat, what do you have? Let's see here. I've got one here. I question this being inspirational. Sometimes you have to stay silent because no words can explain what is going on in your mind and your heart. What's that from? It's from the scattered quote, not attributed to anything in particular. Um, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, most people stay quiet because they can't figure out what's wrong with them. And so we encourage people to talk out their problems. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't, that's backwards and stupid. Yeah, I mean, if somebody's experiencing extreme grief and you don't say anything, you know, they're not going to know it's because you didn't. I don't know the second half of that horrible quote didn't have the <laughs> words. But. 
I've also got another one here. Uh, again, questionable for being inspirational. Uh, this one is attributed to Andrew Young. It is a blessing to die for a cause because you can so easily die for nothing. Was was he was the mayor of Atlanta, right, Andrew Young? Oh. And I think he might have been on the balcony when uh, Martin Luther King was shot to death. I think. Oh wow! Uh, oh, there wow. were several other men, like and Jesse Jackson was there. There were several other people that were there. I think Andrew Young might have been one of them. But uh, so I'll take his word on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can weigh in. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It just makes me think, fuck, I got to figure out a cause yeah. <laughs> in the next 30 years. <laughs> All right. And as always, I've got a couple from Real Man Quotes. Uh, Lori, these are called from an absolutely unhinged Instagram profile. Oh, oh. really? Oh, yeah. Lori, before we start, would you consider yourself a real man? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. Well, let's see how these quotes hit you then okay all right from real man quotes some people are not your friends they're just scared to be your enemy yeah that's show business right <laughs> <laughs> right that's why i don't comment on everyone's tweets right <laughs> i'd rather they think i didn't see them than i had an opinion on <laughs> what dumb thing sure. they said Mark. <laughs> yeah. And I think we'll close it out on this one. Also from Real Man Quotes. Be a man with goals, not a boy with wishes. I don't know. It just seems super toxic and negative. And uh, <laughs> that's not, not how my, I, I, I raised my son to be a boy with wishes. <laughs> we're all, we're yeah. all boys with wishes. That's what goals are. Yeah. Yeah. They, they actually don't contradict one another. One, one, one leads to the next. Yeah. You're a boy with wishes that turn into you being a man with goals. You fucking, that's you evolving. You and then you have, a, then you're a man with wishes and then you're an old man with goals. I mean, it just keeps going until. <laughs> our aforementioned deterioration. So you're dead. <laughs> yeah. whatever, whatever killed you didn't make you strong. <laughs>
but the entire point is to like have a and i can't i came with it essentially as just like a uh uh like a throwaway idea like what do you guys think if you spent like i don't know maybe an hour or two not talking to each other and greg went on a whole tirade about how i'm a fucking dipshit for even <laughs> contemplating that idea. I don't, well, mean, I don't think talk I didn't say dick shit. <laughs> you, been, you thought it, but you thought it. And we <laughs> it. it was in there. You were si It was silently in there. Um, yeah, so then because of uh, all the flack I get for my dates, rather than just not doing them anymore and, and not getting the criticism, I double down and I make more dates that become more and more ridiculous uh and one of them was the scary movie date where you're essentially one person's the killer and another person is the victim and you're essentially playing tag in your house so this is with the female you're reenacting <laughs> the worst nightmare it could be sure but it also you could be like friday the 13th where like she's the killer and you're the unsuspecting <laughs> Sure. Why does why doesn't one of you be Jodie Foster on the pinball machine getting raped by <laughs> while you're at it? While you're at it. Oh, no. I mean, my God. <laughs> well, I mean, that was the button that ended date the date ideas forever. <laughs> Who wants to play the accused? Oh, that's, right. that's that's it. I couldn't think of the name of the movie. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, I guess that's all you had to say, Greg. Now the date ideas yeah. are done forever. Uh, <laughs> last one. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> um, so, uh, do we have anything else before we get to our Reddit remix? Well, what did he say? What did he say about the date? Your just date? He, he just loved it. He um, loved it and that uh, he loved all the twists and turns. He was, he said it was the best one ever because of all the oh, okay. uh, different. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Reddit remix time. Reddit remix. Uh, online. This is where we take a, a question from Reddit, a dating question from Reddit and do it. Yeah. yeah. Online IQ test is ruining my polyamorous relationship. Uh, <laughs> here's a little background. I am a dom in a polyamorous relationship with two lovely young submissive women whom we'll call Sarah and Jane. Uh, Jane and I. Their actual have names are Jane and Sarah. <laughs> that would be so great it's the first test on the iq test um uh, let's see here jane and i have been living together for three years and sarah moved in with us in january of this year everything has been going quite well but an issue has just arisen in our relationship that is making me very concerned whilst pursuing the web on tuesday night i discovered an online iq test I'm aware that most online IQ tests are inaccurate, but having studied psychology, I knew that the test used the exact same types of questions as a professional IQ test. I decided to play a little game with my subs. Uh, they, oh, are very God. they are very into psycho psychological domination and humiliation, and I thought it would be erotic to dominate them intellectually by outscoring them on the IQ test. While they are bright girls, I had no doubt that my IQ would be higher than theirs. I had. Can I just say, I am already aroused by this. <laughs> of course. Does this make you want to get on the apps? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, they are very into psychological domination and humiliation, and I thought it would be erotic to dominate them intellectually by outscoring them on the IQ test. While they are bright girls, I had no doubt that my IQ would be higher than theirs. I had them take the test, and Sarah scored 128. Jane, 134. I took the test after them. However, to my chagrin, I scored a 112. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he knows the word chagrin. How dumb can he be, right? <laughs> so true. <laughs> 
this was un understandably humiliating. Sarah and Jane didn't say anything. We continued on <laughs> as usual afterwards, but these results aroused many doubts in the back of my mind. As a dom, I demand total submission from my girls and it is my responsibility to control them. I cannot do this if they are able to outsmart me. <laughs> I am sure Sarah and Jane know this too. Although they have not disobeyed or disrespected me outright, I am picking up on small aspects of their behavior that show a loss of respect for me. <laughs> I am afraid that this could kill their attraction to me. I am asking for advice from uh, the relationship Reddit because... BDSM community has been disrespect, disrespectful to me in the past. <laughs> Input from both BDSM and vanilla perspectives is welcome. I would like to know a way to mend the damage this has caused to our relationship. Study. <laughs> yes, study. <laughs> <laughs> Always be reading. Go back to school. Work on those IQ points, buddy. <laughs> Just keep taking it. Maybe less time caning girls and more time reading books. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I actually think it's a win for him because uh, they're they're much smarter than he is. And yet they're still emotionally allowing themselves to be dominated by someone who's intellectually inferior. So it's something about more about his uh, inner alpha id or whatever than it is about his his uh, IQ. So maybe let him know <laughs> it's a win. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I like that as a concept if you were really trying to help this guy. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, I, I realized I was and then I, then I lost steam and interest in the point. <laughs> I, I could feel it in you. <laughs> You're like, well, really, I mean, psychologically, what they're attracted to you are your, your, and then you're like, oh, what am I? Doing? Like, whose side am I on? Am I <laughs> you really want to dominate these girls? You already have it in the bag, baby boy. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> well, it seems like they know what they're doing, and they might have known before they even took this test that he was dumb. But they, <laughs> but they like, you know, they like his abs or something. I mean, that's yeah. women. Smart women like dumb guys sometimes. You know. Right. All he has to say is things like crawl. Yeah. <laughs> Not even chagrin, just crawl. Just for, crawl. For him, he also I mean, said whilst, which, you know, that led to me to think that he was going to have very high IQ. So he's good at fooling people. Like he's come up with some mechanisms, some little Britishisms to make people think he's smarter than he is, unless he's actually British and he's just like a dumb British guy. <laughs> I don't know. And there, there's many of them. We just can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> After this last two weeks, I've been, I'm starting to be able to tell. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, for him, since I think his ego is bruised, his only solution is to end it with them because he's just never going to, I don't think he'll ever get over it. He's just going to hope and beg that the next time he takes an IQ test, it's going to be much higher than them. And it probably won't be. Uh, so my solution to you is just set them free. Just <laughs> set the girls free. And uh, don't do this again. <laughs> can he, um, I'm asking you three guys, can he just change so that oh. it doesn't bother him anymore? I mean, can't you just go, oh, I accept this and I'm going to go with it? No. No, nah, I think okay. his, I think so. I don't. I don't think so. I think his whole identity is is a dom, He's a dominatrix. He and he. So in every aspect of life, uh, because if that, because really he wouldn't have written in about this if he gave if he didn't give a shit about not being smarter than them. But in every aspect, he needs to be the alpha, smart leader of the pack who tells them when they can and can't. You know, come. It's a whole fucking thing to him. Mm. So I don't, I doubt very highly that this man would be able to move on from this. I think it's fucking with him to a point where it's going to, it will, I think it's, I think it'll fuck up the relationship. If there is a follow up, if we find a follow up to this, I, I don't doubt that this fucks things up and he finds two new women to try and be, have them be submissive to him. Kane, is this guy you? 
<laughs> Seems like I know a lot about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He spoke you with quite almost, authority. You know, almost personal. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, Lori's right. <laughs> How did you find this? This uh, Reddit comment <laughs> was it in your notes app? <laughs> I told some girls I knew. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, that's great. Um, we um, before we get out of here, Lori, where can people find you? Um, I uh, I'm on the internet. Uh, I'm on Twitter and Instagram as any Lori sixteen. Uh, mm -hmm. I have an album called Corset that came out in October of last year that you could get any place. Pat's uh, been raving about it. Oh, really? Oh, cool. Thank you. Big fan. Um, thank you, Pat. Um, yeah, and uh, I'll be in Toronto this week if anyone's uh, Canadian. Mm. Uh, Doing the JFL some, thing. We have some uh, Toronto. We have a pretty good following in Canada, actually. Yeah. Oh, cool. Josie Laurie. Oh, for God, you will love it. She's amazing. She yeah. is amazing. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, one of I've I told you have a joke about um your mom passing away from COVID and being a Trump supporter that I tell when people ask me like one of my favorite jokes, it's that one. Oh, cool. Thanks. I love it so much. So it's, it's the funniest fucking joke. Um, yeah. So go check out Lori in Toronto. Check out her special, uh, her album. Uh Greg. Only fans. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> right there, VIP. We'll put it all. It'll be up and running next week. I just got to digitize some pictures of my hands. Oh my god! I said, and set, don't forget to set up your bank account so you can collect those funds. Yeah, right? I can't wait. It took me so long to figure out how to really make an income in show business, and then, <laughs> and then I read about all these school teachers being fired for their OnlyFans pages. <laughs> they were making twenty thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Greg, don't let OnlyFans collect the interest that you should be collecting on that money. That's what I'm saying. You're don't right. delay. That's true. Okay. <laughs> We're about to get all new equipment and a brand new studio all <laughs> off of Greg's hands. Uh, you can go to KaneHolloway.com for shows. I have, um, let's see. Yes, I have uh, my show Going Dutch, the dating comedy show, a good bar in San Diego. Come out to that. A lot of really funny comics are going to be on that. And uh, you can follow me at Kane Holloway on Instagram. Pat? I'm at DTBFF Producer Pat on Instagram. Uh, you can also uh, support the show. Go to patreon.com slash DTBFF podcast and uh, rate, review the show. We really appreciate it. And you can also call into the show. What's that number, Pat? Uh, that number is 323-379-5544. Don't take bullshit from fuckers. Fuck yeah. Hey there, if you like the show, you can find bonus episodes and more at our Patreon at patreon.com slash DTBFF podcast. And then rate the show five stars on iTunes because it's the right thing to do. All music by the Rating Monarchs, produced by Patrick Kelly. Patreon.com slash DTBFF podcast.